to know what you're doing. It's really it's not very easy to find out about it. So I, people come to me and they know I don't like Facebook. Actually, I have like colleagues of mine. Like one of them, she, she would ask me, "Oh, you was wrong with that Facebook?" I say, "How did you know?" I say, "Yeah, because I know you're a type. You just you can go on this site." And uh, and 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 then and generally people just know that I'm opposed to Facebook and things like that. So they'll just like come and ask me to delete their account. And it's interesting because more and more people do that because they realize they have no purpose for it, especially if they don't use that. And and these things with Google, like asking for phone numbers and real names now, it's almost as though they try to catalog people, if, as well as the relationships. Like, if you even look at sites like LinkedIn, did you ever think about the fact they they can gather based on all kinds of, um, shall we say, uh, semantic data? Like, I met this person, this person is my colleague, this person is my friend. They could collect enough information on you. So, so that they know for the past five years who you have lunch with, who you work with, what companies you've worked with, and they gather all this information in the database because you supply this data. You look for your friends and stuff, and you mark, you know, I've met this person, you meet this person, and and you kind of think, well, who's who's benefiting from all that? I mean, do you look at your friends and check exactly who they visit, or is it also just a side effect? The fact that the secret agencies, for example, can just very conveniently without without any Without any need for snoops or for warrants or anything, you just go to your Facebook account. So that's public. Let's check. You know, you know this person. Yes, you know him here. He just he just gave us this information, and it's a very convenient thing. Uh, people expose themselves to it. Well, sticking on the subject, just because uh, we're coming to the end of the show, um, I do want to mention this for uh, diaspora, which was probably the main reason why I brought up the social networking and not so much for Google+. I uh, mentioned this last show and I've been very impressed. Now I've got an invite uh, to the Alpha. It's still in Alpha uh, at the moment. But since I've had an invite, I've been very impressed. Uh, uh, in a very simplistic term, I'll probably describe diaspora to Facebook as what Identica is to Twitter. and so far what I've found is a collection of very knowledgeable people who talk about subjects very similar to the subjects that interest me. Uh, I've had some excellent discussions on it. It's not quite up to as feature, and I don't, please forgive me for saying this comment because it always reminds me of a Microsoft MVP. It's not quite as feature rich as Google+. Plus. However, in terms of content and in terms of community, it far outstrips Google+, Plus, in my opinion. Uh, I've had some very, very good conversations and some giggles on it as well. So uh, hopefully that's going to start opening up and becoming more public. I have been offering invites uh, in Twitter and uh, giving out uh, diaspora invites to anybody who wants one, and I'm glad to say quite a few people have taken me up on that. But I'd thoroughly recommend you come over and have a little look at what's going on here because it's a really, really decent, lovely community at the moment. And uh, it doesn't have the same naming convention as uh, Google+, and it doesn't seem to have suffered as a result. Maybe that's because it's new, or maybe it's because it's uh, just a collection of more relevant people. So I've been messing on with that uh, for a bit, and also the Chrome extension for uh, Diaspora, which is just still in its early version, but it's already very handy. And uh, that allows you basically to any website that you're currently visiting, you can click your little widget and it will uh, instantly put it onto your uh, Diaspora stream and you can obviously have room for adding a picture or making your comments on the post. So it's very handy when I come across an article that I want to link. I can just fire away with my extension, uh, click the button at the top of my browser it's and... a uh, very standard feature for all kinds of sites. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I mean... It's, it's this thing called yeah. the... Uh, you just think of the name, something with a letter the end, bookmark letter or something. And that has existed since at least 2005. So the, possibly, I, I just think it's a bit regretful that after all those years that the web was centralized around sites that could deliver content, people were moving through their blogs and things, and now they move back into those centralized sites that offer them a uh, platform to connect with other people. And they basically use it like some kind of a hoover, putting all of their thoughts and everything into this bubble, let's call it Facebook, and it's like this massive thing with photos and people communicating. And there is no disparate, you know, points and sites and domains and people communicating within their sites. It seems to it, it's, it seems to me pretty sad actually. We we kind of move backwards without realizing it. And part of it is the whole cloud computing thing. Like, you know, write all your things online and put it on somebody else's site and service and you know, and that's, that's just fine, you can access it from anywhere, and, but it just means very few companies get all your data. It becomes just a uh, 
data mining operations, the mining of those companies to sell to advertisers, to profile the users, and to basically control their data. And if they delete your data, you're basically screwed. You lose your friends too on the on the uh, the sites. Well, uh, I mean, like I say, I, I've been a big supporter of uh, Diaspora. I think I was um, I was very hard originally because I was looking at it as a competitor to Facebook, very much as the way I looked at it. Google Plus was a competitor to Facebook. And uh, a couple of people have given me their feedback on that particular article, and I'm, I'm more swayed towards their point of view now and looking at it not as a competitor to, to Facebook, but as just a community of people. And uh, how I've found it so far is that my connection of friends on Diaspora aren't the same people that are my connection with friends on Google Plus. So it is two separate communities. Does it uh, make it a bit of a bind having to consider two social networks to post to? Well yes, but I can use copy and paste and solve that problem in a couple of seconds. So I'm very I'm very pleased to be on a Diaspora and well, again very in general question. I I've noticed over the years, based on my personal experience, because I've I've been in Linux out of this for many years is Every once in a while, uh, the generations of sites with a certain, shall we say, a certain concept or a certain structure, they basically die out. So you had the social network back in the days where things like Dig or Reddit is still kind of around, and Dig is also around, but it's not quite the same as before. MySpace is dying, so the whole concept of trying to have a certain personal kind of homepage with loads of junk thrown into it is kind of dying. And then you have this notion of you know, then celebrities were starting to go into Twitter, and then people were starting to use Twitter. And uh, and before Twitter, of course, it used to be like way back in the days, used to be home pages, and there used to be uh, uh, all kinds of all online diaries, and, uh, and the blogs go back to around 2003, 2004, when they were extremely uh, common. And now we have these, I think Facebook was really becoming pretty massive in 2007, 8, maybe. And, uh, now we have YouTube as well. And then you have the those services like uh, Google Plus and you have the uh, you have all those clones too. And I'm kind of wondering where do you see where do you see the the action centralized around in about five years or three years? And where, where do you think we're heading in terms of uh, in terms of communication online? Well, I, th I mean, my view. I think many people even is dying, Siri, because because they just use Facebook to do uh, you know instant messaging. That that's that sort of put me on the spot. Cause it's, it's it's a question I have considered with a massive, probably a massive answer. I think, to say very briefly, I think uh, Usenet is going. Uh, I think in respect to the binaries, I think there's a very, very strong market there. And I, I'm, I truly believe that as BitTorrent is uh, seen as being targeted, I think the Newsnet binaries will be the next big thing and it will be an old tech that we revert, that people revert back to. Um, I mean, I certainly use Usenet for the Linux distributions. I get better connection, uh, get better speeds than I do on a, a BitTorrent. Uh, I've got uh, Linux Mint. Via Usenet, and I think the binaries will be seen as more favourable, especially for those that do download material, which shall we say challenges copyright. Um, so I think Usenet is dead as a or dying as a as a means of communication. I think email, I think email is dying. Um, I think people prefer to communicate on Twitter or Facebook, whether that's by direct message or just sticking it on the wall. I think the the current trend is if you're going to broadcast something, you want to broadcast it to everybody as well as the intended recipient. Um, I think RC is a uh, dying medium because I think the social networking sites like Google Plus, like Facebook, like Diaspora, uh, Diaspora which will soon, if rumor is true, have a chat uh, facility of its own. I think those type of uh, facilities will take over and I think it's really a, a natural progression. IRC is excellent. I've had uh, many a happy memory from IRC. However, if I want to speak to you, Roy, I've got to be in the same channel on the same server as you. Whereas on, fa on say, Facebook, Diaspora, Google+, it doesn't matter where you are, I can grab you. If you're on, if you're on your social network uh, site, I can grab you. So I think What that about instant messaging? I mean, then you have Jabber and you have the... Uh, I mean, I, I'm not free paying attention to any of these things. We use it, we use it at work, use it with two clients, for, ex mm. for example. But the thing about, I, I haven't used MSN network. I never used MSN in the Windows environment. I used to connect to people who were on MSN mm. way back six, seven years ago. Is it true to say perhaps fewer people use it these days? 
I've well, I've never. I'm like I've never ever used it. Um, things like Pigeon um, had no uh, reason to be on my system whenever it came to packaged um, as default with any particular uh, Linux distribution. I had no use of it whatsoever. Um, so multi.